Hi, I didn't see you there. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this free enterprise race between Dusty Griff and Martin Broadcloak. I am Zoe Vermillion, and I'm joined in the booth by Game Boy F9. Hey, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. How are we all doing? I don't know about you. I'm doing fantastic, and I'm hoping that this race will be just as fantastic. Uh, we have two heavy hitters here. We're entering into the round of eight. We have Dusty Griff, who just is fresh off. Well, it's hard to call it an upset when it's Dusty, but an upset of Pancras in the round of 16, going two and one. Previously went two and oh versus Bad Karma and four and one in the group stage versus Martin Broadcloak, who has had a clean run through the brackets, two and oh versus Night Dew, two and oh versus Soul Fire in the opening round, but went three and two in groups. So we've got four losses between these two all the way here in the round of eight. This is going to be a fantastic matchup. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic matchup, especially, well, yeah, you mentioned the four losses, but then we have to count up all the wins, 15 of them. So uh, a lot of a lot of winning, a little bit of losing, which means we're going to have a heck of a race here and we're going to have a heck of a series. Uh, I'd, I'd say it's good chance this is going to go three races here. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever. And here, starting off the first race, we have a Sid. So that's uh, one tally mark on the Ogre X side of this uh, this fight. Uh, but these objectives, um, we were talking about it in the pregame. I hope you like cutscenes. We've got Tower of Zot. We've got Destroy the Super Cannon. We've got Complete Cave Magnus. Uh, Return the Panda Yang's Wife is basically a cutscene. Murasami Altar, basically a cutscene. Uh, the fastest one of these is going to be the Rat Tail. Um, so, yeah, we were in for a bit of long haul. No giant, fortunately, for our runners. Fortunately, for those of us with early sleep schedules. Um, but still probably looking at 90 to 120 minutes here. Yep, um, which is which has pretty much been the average, you know? Uh, I, I did a calculation and I believe the average seed, uh, at least in the group stages, was one hour and 45 minutes. So um, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be right in line with that here tonight. Our runners will be getting started here in about the next minute. So before we get started, I do want to shout out the two behind the scenes helping us out. We have Nyobari restreaming and Scythe Marshall tracking and we thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. And thanks for helping bring the hype to this race right here on Free Enterprise 2. Yes. And if my calculation is correct, we are 20 seconds away from live racing. Yeah. And according to our restreamer, I'm just seeing this in chat, we are trying out Coda's captions for the stream today. So please feel free to give us feedback on whether those are working, if they're not working, if they are working, but not doing super well. Please let us know. We're going to try this out and see if we can get that rolled into our uh, our feature set in the future. Sounds sounds like an excellent plan to me. And I believe there it is. The competition has begun and uh, the clock's been started and the we have faded in. And our partner for Sid is, oh, I always forget. This, one, this, <laughs> I always... this, one's, uh, this one's Palum. Thank you. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the Quake kid, and Quake is Earth Elemental, and I associate green with Earth Elemental, and so green shirt. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I remember it. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I write it down like every time, or I try to find my notes every time, and I, and I didn't this time, and so uh, yeah, ten demerits for Game Boy F nine. <laughs> there's also there's also the Porum, kind of rhymes with Orum Orange. For the for the shirt, there's that one too. But they're twins. It's only their parents can tell them apart, really. Yeah, that's brilliant. And what did we start with? I didn't see what we started with. I don't. It was a cure two. three. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we run into an early Mylon Z or even a couple D liners, that could be an offensive J item. So we can't uh, can't sleep on it. But not the type of start you're hoping for. You're hoping to get a uh, some sort of. <laughs> well, there's the Dragoon Helm. <laughs> wow. Well, all, all we need now is uh, Kane, and we're good to go here. Uh, just a reminder for those who have just joined in the bracket round, seeing this, seeing the brackets for the very first time, we are having weaker uh, uh, treasure boxes here. So uh, something to keep in mind is uh, we go through here. Yep. T-Pro Max Tier 6, I believe, if I remember exactly how I did it. Did pull a poison axe here on Martin's side from the public treasury. That's going to get this Sid started. 
and uh, give you some attack power here on the overworld. Also found a Sylph Summon. If we come across Iridia, she's not super popular in this flag set unless you want to just crack a bunch of Sirens and go straight to Nuke, but that Sylph can do some work early on with the Sylph glitch. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, also a thousand damage, you know, every every time and with, with healing, I'd, I'd be all for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, seeing a bit of flip-flopping here, uh, Dusty's now going to go grab the Dragoon Helm from Edward while Martin goes ahead and loots out Damsey and then launches the Hovercraft. May not loot the bottom. Looks like just interested in that one freebie chest there. I have to say, this is just beautiful art right here that's, that's going on right now. <laughs> so so where, where are we going to go? I, I, I'd say my vote would be Mount Hobbs. Get a third character, especially if you have a poison axe. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry about that. My internet seems to have picked up, picked up slightly. Um, yeah, no, right to Hobbs uh, with that poison axe. See if I can grab another character. See if I can grab give myself a cane. Uh, a white mage would be good. Even Yang. Uh, Yang in this flag set, uh, people are starting to realize that his power is really, really been upped. Just by the virtue of you're not getting these big weapons like you were in the group stages. There's no Cecil. There's no Fu. So a stack of sirens get you a bunch of levels. That's all Yang needs. I tell you what, Zoe, you called it. There's Redia, and uh, I would definitely find a way to win this fight, and you're, you're going to win this fight. This this is pretty much a, a slam dunk here. Yeah, this the CPU itself only has 1,040 hit points. The orbs each have about 104, roughly or so. Um, so you just got to get through this. You're only going to take percentage base damage. You have some cure twos. Nothing's really going to stand in your way here, and you can do a couple things with this Rydia. You can use that Sylph Summon, you know, with the level she gains from this if you keep her alive, or you can just toss her on the ground, say, okay, you're gonna nap for this seed and she can serve as your anchor. Uh, both relatively viable strategies. Wow, that seemed to be a rather weak Gaia drum right there, but that's okay. 4,000 points in 10 levels, and I believe uh, Rydia is online as far as Sylph is concerned. Yep, just gotta use it. Um, I doubt we'll be checking the the summon at the front of Hobbs because Sylph is kind of the best case scenario there unless you really wanted to fish for something like Titan. Um, it looks like Martin is going to depart as Dusty is coming up. High five between these two runners. Yeah, so pretty much uh, everybody doing pretty similar things. I think Dusty did one other thing uh, that I didn't notice, but uh, we move straight on to the end line cave. Makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, so I think Dusty did a little bit of extra looting there in Dampsian, which is where this time difference is really coming from. But yeah, we're going to head in here. Uh, looks like we're going to toss on this change rod, going to use this Sylph Summon. Um, we do have the Sylph Glitch on still for brackets, which means that so long as Rydia has 25 MP, she will be able to cast Sylph for free, as long as she is not in that middle slot. Um, so going to use a 10 tier just to get her the MP to use that because she only starts with 10 and you don't get MP when you level up and we hadn't run to a free heal yet. So going to take care of that right now. Yeah, and I and I really like Dusty's strategy here to get the, get the um, dancing dagger going. I think he's going to be a little bit quicker than Martin with this fight. Yeah, absolutely. Takes out both the attacker and the uh, CPU main body there at the same time rather than needing an extra hit. So went through it probably one or two turns quicker than Martin was. Martin, though, heading down here, not stopping for any loot, going straight in to the Antlion spot. Who are we going to see today? Oh. Uh-oh. Actually, it would be good if it was Wyvern. I was <laughs> going to say. I say this is a great spot if it's Wyvern, because this spot has pretty low magic power. You're not really at much danger. It's really slow. Yeah, you're, uh, your kiddos may go down, because it's, it's still a mega nuke. But so does Wyvern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, unfortunately, uh, those two uh, lost there, but uh, that's all right. Plenty of plenty of places to get more experience. Uh, it's uh, Dusty saw in, well, no, it's always a nice wall. So we are going to learn the free spell here. And that is uh, Mage. Oh my. Not a particularly good one, I don't think. Well, Dusty looted the public treasure, so Dusty should have that self orb as well. Probably just trying to see if he could get Titan there. Um, I do want to point out something Martin did that I've been seeing a lot more this tournament than I have ever before. 
if you get a Womp out of Antlion, I've been seeing a lot of runners reset out of it, and I really love that. It saves you the time if you don't have access to exit to get back out, and if all it was there, a wizard hat, that's not going to really serve you super well in the long run. Might as well get your time back. The experience here isn't enough to to cry over. Yeah, I, I yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, fifteen hundred points is like not not a lot when you're considering that you're going to get at least half a million by the hmm. time the game ends. So speaking of that exit. Uh, Dusty just found one here in the save room, along with a black belt. Um, you're going to come down here, you're going to take out the boss, you're going to get a wizard hat, but that black belt, honestly, is the prize of Antlion Cave right now. Yeah, I would say these 2D Lunars are also something I'd like to see early on. Get get that all wrapped up. We have seen now three Lunar Sparkles, because if I remember correctly, the Bygan spot was also a Lunar Sparkle. Also, Dusty luckily took that save room because just ate Mega Nuke. Uh, for breakfast. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, that's that's going to uh, put him a little bit behind. A little unlucky over on Martin's side. Uh, Rydia got, took a couple hits and the flame, and that was it. But uh, Rydia's back online. Going to try that self again, but I think Fire Two's going to win, and Martin gets another boss. Two from two so far. Yeah, no, absolutely. Going pretty well so far here on Martin's side. Dusty with that slight stumble. Shouldn't cost him too much time, but is going to go ahead and drop this to Wyvern Standard Time just to get the Star Veil off. Make sure he's got a good setup here. Shouldn't be an issue, especially if you run buffers. Hey! Uh, excuse me. It was three from three, not not two from two. But, uh, eh. so my bad there. <laughs> eh, whatever. Um, but there we go. We have a Magma Key from Fubul. We found a key item, and it's going to get us underground access. Uh, you don't hate to see it. You kind of maybe would have wanted a few more key items before this, but you know what? Magna Key is the first key item. I won't shake a stick at it. Yeah, uh, do we have Sirens yet? I don't think so because we have the basic starter kit this this uh, go around, correct? Yeah, so no Sirens in the starter kit. Um, so we're going to have to see if there are any available. If while I'm down there looking through Fey March. Maybe take a trip to Tamra. I've noticed a lot of runners fading that so far this bracket stage, just to save some time because it's only a shopping trip. Or in Dwarf, you know, I could see cracking a couple of sirens, especially if we find coffins as well, just to get this palum up to nuke. Excuse me, my internet hiccuped. Now I have the hiccups. It's contagious. <laughs> all right, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get that all set up, but uh, Dusty, as, as always, said, did recover from that uh, little uh, blarg there and has learned Sylph, and he's on his way as Martin goes ahead and actually is going to do a little shopping before heading down to the underground. Yep, yeah, looking for stuff like life potions, uh, silk web star veils, all good stuff you can find on the overworld. Even a stack of cure twos can really do you some good, uh, depending on what you've got upcoming. Uh, but the seed's got jokes because that was just a self summon along with what looked like an eagle eye available in the uh, aggregate item shop today. And it looks like the decision is to go to the Fey Marsh and uh, totally understandable. Uh, I actually wonder if he's gonna. Um maybe do some looting down here because the treasuries are going to be much better down here. Yeah, with that safety save outside, I imagine we are going to loot at least the first two floors. I know my philosophy is if I don't find the encounter chest in the first two floors, I just take what I've gotten and, and run with it. But maybe he'll search out the, the encounter chest and then loot the whole thing. We will see what, uh, what his plan is here. And here is Zoe's point in action, a cure three gets dropped uh, over on Dusty Griff's side to defeat that early D-Lunar. So, well played and gonna gain some time here. Yeah, absolutely. Those uh, those can be pretty potent. Uh, a lot of times I'll run into a bull, see secure threes for sale and go, I'm gonna grab two of these. And at least twice as I've been leaving for bull, it's been D-Lunars and it's like, alright, cool. I'm glad I did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, not too much down downstairs in the Fey Marsh. Uh, we're about to see what the key item is. Um, play, place your guesses. Oh no! What? Oh, what are you doing, Martin? <laughs> Forgot he'd opened that chest. Apparently, I've done that before. Uh, and a sand ruby. So not something we're looking for, but it is a key item. Thank you, Nobari. 
Um, and it is also another character check whenever our runners do decide to get back up there. Um, find some hourglasses here in the Feymart shop. Gonna grab two to start. Gonna start selling out some stuff. Okay, gonna save money maybe for some sirens. We'll see. But grabbing two hourglasses, if one of these bosses here in the Feymarch is a hourglassable boss, we could be coming back as soon as we find something like coffins. Okay, a coffin yeah. wouldn't help, but one of those is an hourglassable boss, technically. Yeah, is that the uh, Dark Elf? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah Dark Elf after... second form. Yeah. Yep. Loses the boss bit. It can be stopped. It can be weak. It cannot be coffined, but you can do a lot to the dragon form once you make it through the uh, the Dark Elf form. Yeah, and I, I, I love that escape point over in the Fey Marsh. It's just like, oh, we're just going to go out the third floor, and somehow it warps you back to the top. Love it. Yeah. Magic! Yay! Uh, Dusty likewise checked the agate shop, saw the Sylph summon, and went, well, I've already got one of these. Uh, so Martin's going to go set up Sheila 1. Grabs another Sork shirt there. So that could be a nice, you know, nearly two sirens, if I'm remembering the conversion rate correctly. Uh, or could slap that on to your other caster and have good defenses. So not a not a bad find for a cheeky little two chest greed. Yeah, and I mean, it, 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 here's another thing. Once Martin comes back upstairs, he's got a key item check happening, and he's also going to have a character check, a, a, a rather short character check. We haven't seen who, who's uh, sleeping Kaipo yet. No idea who's uh, who's taking a nap in the bed. Let's see what's available here in these Tomer shops. As I said, a lot of runners have been fading it, but, you know, your early game. Want to look for these powerful J items. Want to see what you can find. Um, well, it's not a tier 5 powerful J item, but there were silk webs and there are life potions. So two of those great things you want to find on the overworld can still be underground. So we're going to grab uh, a little bit of both. Yeah, and it uh, looks like Dusty is doing uh, similar things. Oh, we're going to find out uh, Psychiatrist. Oh, oh, a silence staff. Hello. Not bad, Psychiatrist. We, uh, we thank you for your duty. Keeping all the uh, dwarves mentally healthy, it's very important. Uh, make sure you take care of your own mental health. Uh, but yeah, silence staff is pretty big. That middle sword, not too bad, especially if it's an edge sleeping in that bed. Cat cloth, it's a yang sleeping in the bed. That, uh, that was a pretty nice little little Tom or treasury there. Dusty Griff immediately sold the cat claw. You really can't blame him with all that money. And seeing Yang is, uh, you know, within a reasonable amount of time, it's not guaranteed, but there are the sirens over our Martin site in the dwarf castle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of claws, there's a thunder, thunder claw. So the sirens are going to be huge. Um, not sure if we'll pop them right away or if we're going to hang on to them because we do have those hourglasses, but Glad to get those out of the way. We know that the siren is a viable grind. We don't have to rely on uh, alternative grinds like your your D machine, which isn't super great in this flag set, uh, or you know doors, which are which are fine. I love my love me some doors, but sirens are just a little bit quicker. And it looks like Martin straight away is going to uh, grab some experience points, and it, it it's a great idea. Yeah, no, I absolutely love this idea here. Uh, going to go ahead and pop an hourglass on this egg so that when it hatches, it doesn't just completely destroy his party. Gonna throw out fire too, probably Sylph as well. That'll get the healing back up, and then we'll get the uh, the damage out. Probably won't quite kill. We'll need another spell, but we'll see. Yeah, but totally understandable. I mean, you're not at very high levels right now. You're only like level 11, level 12, but... Uh... Oh, poison the egg! Ouch! <laughs> but don't, uh, eat, don't eat that anymore. Yeah, uh, no, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I like eggs, but uh, it, not that egg. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe don't uh, maybe don't prepare, uh, do your dinner prep or your breakfast prep using a poison axe. Probably not a good idea. Uh, but there is <laughs> Quake Kid's namesake, uh, Learning Quake. That is going to speed up the seed dramatically. Might even head on over to Dwarf Castle and see if we can take that down here. Um, Nope, gonna go back up. Probably heading for ordeals or Baron in. <laughs> Takes an unfortunate landing. Uh, one square there where you can land and not depart. I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 
so 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 pretty so pretty much you you know you know you've done it all when you've landed at that spot yep uh, we are going to get a check of the kaipo character what is it going to be it is going to be a duplicate ridia oh goes, uh, uh uh no <laughs> oh that's a, that's a bit that's a bit unfortunate but uh there are there are uh i believe three duplicates is that are correct there will be three duplicates now. Yeah, there was. There's always one when you're playing in a flag set where there's no like C maybe or C distinct. Uh, but since we've removed two characters from the pool entirely in Cecil and Fu, that gives us three duplicates. Um, that Ridia though, is actually kind of important. Um, if we don't come across a curse ring at any point, that is just a free anchor sitting there waiting for us. Yeah, very true. I mean, the curse ring dropping 15 from all stats brings your agility down to like one. So yeah, it, it pretty much makes uh, uh, the Z fight, uh, well, it, it makes it substantially easier because Z won't just go big bang, big bang, big bang, have a nice day, you know? Yeah, and if you can't find that curse ring, having a level one Rydia with such little uh, agility is, is pretty nice. Uh, speaking of Yangs though, and then a little bit of vanilla action over here with this Yang, you find one in Baron Inn, guarded by or having tea with Rubicant. Wow, that was a fast glare. This spot is uh, no slouch on the speed. It is actually uh, pretty speedy compared to the spot that comes after it. Now, meanwhile, Dusty Griff is uh, probably going to... Uh, I'm imagining he's also saw the sirens and we'll also do a little bit of grinding before uh, continuing yep i imagine looks like dusty is following in martin's footsteps just ever so slightly behind but there's a lot of seated in front of us a lot of time to make up a lot of time to lose so hard to say anybody is particularly ahead right now though martin does have a very slight advantage and the maga sisters okay this isn't too bad mindy's spells aren't going to hurt very much at all um what you're really worried about is the punches from Cindy. Uh, but if we can silf her down in a couple times, we should be able to keep up with the damage so long as they don't hit exactly Rydia. Oh, wow, Rydia sustained that. Never mind me, Sorka Robe, coming in clutch. Yeah, and then a big quake to probably clean up. Yep, there yep. it goes. There it's it all is. over. All right, and our key item from Baron Inn today is... Okay. Uh, well, how do you like wide open spaces? Yeah, uh, I, I, I like this quite a bit. Wow, we we're gonna have some choices to make. Uh, 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 what do we? Well, I might consider going up to the moon just to get just to see what the character up there is. Uh, that might be a reason you'd go to the moon. But at the same time, you're per, you've got a really high chance of defeating the dwarf castle monsters. And you got a character down there? Gosh, I don't know. I don't know. You've also got an hourglass and a quake kid. You can go up there and take the hairdryer chest as well for some more experience and a possible chance at a good piece of loot. I like the moon play here, um, but Martin's going to go ahead and remember the credo. Check your objectives. Check your freebies. I set up Sheila 1. He's going to go ahead and check Sheila 1 before he forgets. Because if you set this up and aid it for a few checks, I don't know about you, I'm liable to forget. Yeah, and it, I, I remember the last time I did commentary a, a while back, uh, it just took forever. Like they picked up the package and it took maybe an hour for either of them to turn in the package. I'm like, are they gonna remember? Are they gonna remember? And they remembered. Ooh, adamant. All right, cool. So that is one half of a required objective. Finally, uh, a bit of progress here in the seed aside from just opening up more and more locations to fight. Yep, exactly. Um, and looks like Dusty Griff will challenge and is going to challenge uh, Dr. Lugay to start, which uh, kind of is a little bit of a bummer to start, I would. Well, actually, no, no, no. not that no. bad because because it's three parts and Dr. Lugay will have less HP. Yeah, OK, we're fine. Yeah, I like this. And it's actually four or four units, technically, because you have the you have Baunab, you have uh, Luke himself, and then you have Baunab Z, and then you have Luke Part 2. Um, so this is a spot where you get a bunch of HP because it is a multi-part fight in vanilla. And now we're fighting a multi-part fight here, so it's going to be balanced out. It's actually really nice. 
Yeah, especially with uh, Quake uh, easily dismissing Dr. Luge here. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's see, gonna go ahead and hit the self just to, just in case it's not quite enough to take out Luge Part Two. I don't think it will be. Not quite. Yeah, self might round it out though. Yeah, unfortunately the gl the the gas did not hit Ridia there. Um, I don't know, maybe Rydia is invulnerable anyway, but uh, no matter, Dr. Luge is down in another uh, successful battle. Yep. And the good news is we don't have to worry about Wyvern right here. <laughs> We've already seen Blarg not going to surprise us with a, uh, a rude Mega Nuke. And there's not much that can be at Dwarf 2 that is particularly obnoxious. Uh, looks like today it is Odin, and this will be a very easy Odin. Yeah, with the with the very low HP of that spot, I mean, one quake, have a nice day. And there's Rosa, which will be Dusty Griff's fourth character for now. Yeah, and I don't imagine that we're going to be getting rid of this, Rosa. Uh, looking at this party, if you can find yourself a Cursed Ring, you have a perfect party set up for Reflex Strats. That can be dangerous with the looming Valvalis that we have not yet seen, if it's guarding something uh, needed. But if you can find yourself some money, you know, go at it. Looks like we got Leviathan here, uh, probably from the randomized dwarf summons. I didn't see Dusty learn an orb, but feel free to correct me if someone noticed. Uh, but with with the advent of 4.5.0, uh, the summons that Rydia learns, rather than being the vanilla summons, are randomized within a pool of everything except for Chocobo and Bahamut. All right, we got a, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a free character up at the moon because the darkness crystal was acquired, and that is not a character I want in my party. That is not a character that I want to see because now Martin has to decide, do I want to demachine grind on this seed? Takes the, uh, takes the tele for at least anchoring purposes. We'll see if there's a demachine grind in the future for Martin. Uh, it's gonna be in the back of his mind, but I imagine he's going to go straight to ordeals to clear that out and get this Tela online to get those utility spells going. Wow, very interesting. I don't think Dusty is going to do similar, is going to do this, I don't think, just because he's gone into a different path here and picked up Rosa. Yeah, there's, there's not much with this party on Dusty's side that I would be wanting for. Um, a better anchor, sure. Uh... Tello would do that, but so does the Riddy in the bed once he finds out who's there. Uh, but yeah, if, I, if I'm Dusty, I see this party, I go, okay, cool. If I can find a good source of money, I can do Reflex Strats. And just, there's no need to go look for another character there. You'll find an anchor, or you, you, you'll either find an anchor or you'll find a curse ring. So one of those two things is inevitable at this point. So Dusty's not in any rush to go to the moon, I don't think. And we and we didn't notice, but uh, the uh, or at least I didn't notice, I should say, uh, the key item there at the dwarf castle was a pan. So Dusty Griff is Ooh. able to deal with all three parts of the Sylph Cave. Yeah, I failed to notice that as well. So that's a it's a good eye and a good eye by our tracker, making sure that it got lit up. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a bit of time loss for Martin and, uh, if and when he decides to go to dwarf, especially if this is something that's required. But Martin, as predicted, going to go right over to Ordeals, get this Tela online, and see if there is a key item up here. After a bit of a drought in key items in the early game, we're uh, we're getting a slow stream. It's it's not like a uh, a river or a waterfall by any chance, but it's uh it's more than a creek. Yeah, def definitely more than a creek. And now now I feel like there's there's a restaurant that's right next to a creek. Oh, there's the hook. Uh, so. Uh, do we have to do anything we with do. that? No, but we Tree do. With rat tail. Oh, so we do. There we go. So that is required, and uh, that means a little bit more time loss for Martin here. Yep, just uh, just a bit there. Once he gets it done, uh, he'll have to retrace the steps here. So that's going to buy back Dusty some of the time that he lost with the early game looting and a little bit of a less efficient play than Martin on some of these bosses, usually just because of item usage. Uh, but Martin is finding a Sura up here. We no match for a Quake. Whereas Dusty is going to show us again, Baron in, uh, Rubicant into Maga Sisters to get this Yang. 
I doubt he takes the end because he sold the cat claw and he's probably going to want to keep his casters. Did not heal. Oh my goodness. Uh, Gets the virus off. Okay, this is fine. <laughs> uh, it's fine for now. I mean, we still have to deal with the Maga sisters, and uh, they they went first over on the right side, so I'm guessing they're going to go first on the left side. We'll see. I have a question that I'm, I'm scared to ask. Did Dusty save? Well, I guess it doesn't matter because the quake went off first. Wow, Ooh. goodness me. I guess we're going to ask that question uh, in about an hour or so time. My goodness. Good gosh. Okay, that was momentarily heart stopping. Uh, the make sure you save has become a little bit of a meme in this tournament. Uh, there was one very, very exciting match to watch where both runners figured out to save and took pretty big wipes. Uh, it was very entertaining to watch, but I know that for myself, I was screaming at my TV while I was on vacation in Milwaukee. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, uh, Cecil, Cecil, you're not you're not supposed to be outside of that room. You're supposed to be inside of the uh, of the room at the top of my ordeals. But uh, yeah, taking a walk. Yeah, get that's a, fair. Getting get a little fresh air. That's fair. Um, if you are brand new to Free Enterprise Two, if you just walked on into Free Enterprise Two. Welcome to the community. Um, we're glad to have you. Let me explain how this is working. You've noticed that we have that number seven lit at the bottom of the of, of the of your screen. Uh, you notice that there are seven objectives. You have to complete all seven of those objectives. And when you do, you're going to gain the crystal. And then you get the chance to defeat Zeromus, the final boss of the game. And if you do that, and you're the first runner to do it, you will win the race, and in this case, we'll go up one nil on in this quarterfinal matchup. Yes, absolutely. Very good uh, explanation there. And finding Dark Imps here in the mirror room. I don't like this too much. Um, the Dark Imps are classified under a free fight. There's some spots where they can be really nasty because there's three of them, and if you get them in, like, Hey, Bahamut, they're very punchy. But... You still like to see them because they can be hourglass, they can be coffined in a bit of a harder location. Here, eh, womp. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dusty Griff uh, dispatching of, uh, yeah, def definitely giving Asura her marching orders there. And uh, and there's uh, the uh, Cecil taking a little stroll and that's another easy fight there. And Tella is now online over on Martin's side, worth noting that uh, as, uh, if I miss, unless I miss something, Martin still has a perfect record on boss fights, eight from eight. Yeah, has not yet taken a, uh, a wipe or a reset, as far as I can tell. Um, Dusty, though, has kind of made up some time here. The, the differences between these two right now, uh, Martin has checked the moon, uh, gotten the Tela from up there, Whereas Dusty has taken out Dwarf Castle and gotten that pan and therefore the required hook, uh, the required pan and the required hook, I should say. It was uh, a doubly required piece of cookware today. Um, and that's kind of where we're standing. So at this point, you know, early in the game, we could say who had an advantage now with the divergence. Uh. Yeah, and I think uh, the big decision is coming up right now. 55,000 experience points, so... Uh, 10,000 for Yang, and is it, uh, oh, we've turned on encounter. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here, here we go, indeed. Looks like we're going to set up the Manip outside. Um, this is not uncommon. Um, during Highway to the Zemus Zone 3, when we had uh, Can't Run on, instead of setting up in the Giant, where you have to run from the encounters, you would set it up typically outside of Baron Castle, but anywhere works using the step chart. So it's nice to see a return of this strategy here. Uh, we'll set it up and we'll go up. Notably, if you mess up the D-Machine grind after this, uh, you can't just immediately go back into it. You have to reset it up. So can be a time loss, but uh, Martin's a good enough runner that I don't see that being an issue. Yep, De definitely uh, very important and, you know, already a minute's gone by here with this with this setup so uh hopefully it'll work out and and it'll, it'll be fine meanwhile uh 
Avoiding the cricket talk is Dusty Griff. Uh, climbing up Mount Z the Tower of Zot, Dusty Griff is not doing a D-Machine grind, so you're all saved from the uh, cricket talk this evening. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tower Tower Babble, uh, to be precise. Oh, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. They look the same. Um, they, are, they use the same tile set. Yeah, Tower Babble going to show us who is here at the top of Tower... Uh, this is Leviathan, and well, we know that where the turtle is, and we don't have to launch the Falcon, so that's pretty good news. Uh, also, chat, uh, not Leviathan. This is a Mylon. Purple robes. I saw. I corrected. I corrected myself before he turned. I did realize I was wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Dusty, I wanted to point out, Dusty did reset out of uh, ordeals. So once he finds that Tella on the moon, uh, will not have the option for a D machine grind. So he is pretty well set into either Siren or Moon Bosses for his grind here in the seed. And how are we going to play this? We got, we've got a lot of HP uh, to work off of and um, it, uh, it's a, what is it, like 20,000? And Mylon hits kind of hard here. I mean, Rose is already, well, and then I saw 40 damage for uh, <laughs> and then one damage, but well, we did see about 500 for Rosa. That's why I had to comment what I commented. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good comment. It hits pretty hard against the front row. Um, this spot is just shy of 19,000 health, if I remember correctly, like a few points shy. Um, there's, it is, this is a spot, as we mentioned, with Lugay in the Calbrena spot. This is Lugay's spot. So all four of his forms, we take that HP and we sum it up for whatever boss ends up here. So pretty healthy location. Uh, almost as healthy as most of the moon spots, to be honest. Uh, looks like Martin... I don't know what happened with Martin, because I thought he had the Minip set up so where he would have the D-Machine grind, but has been running from some encounters, so it looks like we are going to try it again. But this time, inside the giant. Meanwhile, uh, I really like this play by Dusty Griff, where he threw down uh, silk webs to slow Mylon Z down, because he was going a bit quick there. So uh, definitely good there. And um, Martin's just looks like oh, he might have it now. No, he, I guess no. he doesn't. Not yet. I think it's going to be one more if I was counting the steps correctly. I was wrong. Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, this this is the big risk. I mean, we're four minutes into this uh, into this exploration here, and uh, we we haven't we haven't found it yet. It looks like you maybe needed to take those extras, and then it would be one more in here. This is judging by the lack of running. This is it. Whew. All right, I tell so... you what, after after this grind happens, it, with the life glitch on, it was not on in ZZ4, but it, but it is on here. It's um, yeah, it's the back row glitch that got disabled. Um, it, it, it's going to go by pretty quickly, and um, uh, there are going to be a lot of bosses going down. Oh, and a vanilla tower key. Uh, if you're a, if you're a person who doesn't like doing keyless tower, this is the type of seed that that can really come back and bite you. Uh, because especially if this uh, hierarchy holds extra value, aside from the fact that it is an objective, um, that could be spicy. Especially if Martin decides, "Oh, I've got power overwhelming. I'm going to hold off until I get the tower key." That could be that could be bad. By the way, do we have uh, ethers over on? Oh, yes. we have ten. E we have ten ethers. Okay. Yeah, there was an ether purchase uh, very shortly after returning to the Earth with that Tella, uh, I believe before even clearing ordeals. Uh, oh, this is a boss you don't mind seeing here in the Super Cannon room. Pogo Pogo. Uh, yeah. Very nasty boss most of the time, but here, not many HP. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is going to be very quickly dismissed and... Um... And that'll be all. And Dusty Griff is now up to one, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, ten from eleven in bosses. Yeah. Let's see. And he will be at let's see two, four, six, seven. If he gets key atom from this. He'll be at eight key atoms. But more importantly, he will be up to two objectives completed uh, between the super cannon room and returning the Pan Yang's wife. Uh, he is up two nil on Martin. But it is still way too early to say how much advantage that actually is, especially with Martin getting this grind. And we'll be uh, 
able to power through the seed very quickly and won't actually have too much fear of a, of a Valvalis either, uh, with having that Yang to be able to punch through a little bit. Notably, isn't going to have a White Mage, though. I just realized that. Does not have a White Mage in the party for this grind. I mean, pure offense. Uh, yeah, pretty much uh, would have to get an Ashura call, I believe. I don't think we've seen Ashura call yet. Uh, and then you might have some healing, but... Um... Yeah, we we saw the Ashura orb in the Fey March, I believe, in one of the chests that was open. I don't know if it was learned, though. It does have Sylph, so the Sylph healing for the... the middle to late game will be sufficient. Uh, not necessarily something you want to do on Zeromis, but if you're going to be able to defeat it before, you know, it, it defeats you, you don't really need too much healing. That key item went by so quickly. It was um, a silent staff. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, that's not bad. Yeah, pretty good for that, Rosa. Uh, gonna go here and crack another egg or two, looks like. Not quite at 10 key items, only sitting at 7, uh, but 34,000 experience, especially getting on this Rosa who came in after the original Siren was cracked. Uh, we'll get her caught up a bit to this party and probably get her to cure 3 if I had to guess. No, not, not quite. We got Blink. Yep, and uh, that's good enough for Dusty. Moving on to the next objective. Uh... Is it, uh, it is, uh, back to the Fey Marsh. Yeah, so you've got two bosses down here. One of them is really kind of nasty in Octomam in the Leviathan spot. And I'll touch on that one in a moment. But in the Queen spot is that Dark Elf. And the magic there is relatively high, so Dark Elf spells will hurt quite a bit. But if you can Quake and fire your way through it or Leviathan your way through it to get it to that second form, and you have an hourglass in your inventory, or even just one of the kids to cast stop, uh, the rest of the fight is relatively free. As for that Leviathan spot, the Octoman, yes, it's punchy. Yes, it's gonna hurt. But if you can stabilize with blinks and just dealing some damage to it, every two hits, it will slow down. And if you can get it down to that one remaining tentacle, that is going to be perfectly fine. And you will be able to uh, really kind of maintain your your, your board presence, so to speak, and kind of push forward and, and take it out. And I did see a Cursed Ring purchase over on uh, Dusty's side, and so that's definitely implying a possible uh, Rydia replacement for Rydia. Yep, uh, or toss it on. Let's see, what do we got? We have the three, three mages and Sid. Just toss on that Sid. Keep, uh, keep him as your anchor unless I've missed a character shuffle here or there. Yeah, meanwhile, we surely have to be getting toward the end of this uh, D-Machine grind. Uh, Martin's been going at this for pushing on five minutes here. Yep, gonna probably try and get all both kids up to nuke if he can. And without 10 key items, it does take quite a bit, especially Rydia, even though she wasn't base level typically takes about 20 D machines to get there. So 10 and 10 life glitches. I think we're on like the ninth or 10th here. So we should be wrapping up here pretty shortly. All right, here's the Dark Elf fight. Uh, the Quake is uh, in the queue as Zoe called it. But first we're gonna have some elemental damage. Oh, yeah. that's not much. Yeah, not, not too much there. Um, I maybe oversold it. <laughs> uh, the week coming out, though, will do exactly what it does. Reduces you down to single-digit hit points. In this case, single-digit hit point. Um, ooh, that Whisper on Viridia is kind of bad, but going to throw out the Silk Web, slow down this Dark Elf. That Piggy will, uh, will cause this spell to fizzle. Because the only spell you can cast while being a pig is uh, Pig. Or, <laughs> or Heal. You can cast Heal as well. But. Well, uh, yeah, this is kind of, yep, there, there's a fizzle in Leviathan. 
Uh, yeah, it, 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 yeah, you were, uh, you were saying that you might have sold this fight short. I, I don't know, with this really <laughs> fast, uh, dark elf, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced there. Yeah, that, that is a fair point. It is, it is pretty tricky, but you're pretty well stabilized. Uh, you can get this Rosa back up and, hey, thank you, dark elf. That was very kind of you. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We have a Quake queued up, we have a Leviathan queued up. That should be enough, I believe, to push this Dark Elf into Phase 2 so we can toss that Hourglass the Dusty Bot to then get Rosa back up and finish off this fight. Meanwhile, Martin is still going. Uh, has anyone been keeping track? How many? I am, nope. Yeah, I am not seeing anything in chat that's uh, keeping, uh, that has counted this, so... Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, either way... Dusty Griff uh, has the Dark Elf saying, Say your prayers! <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the pixel remaster. Right here. Sorry. There is the uh, hourglass toss, and now this Dark Elf is not going to be moving for quite a bit of time, so we can toss out Quakes, we can toss out Leviathans, we can toss out any healing if we want to be super safe, but I don't think we care. And we will get this spot down, and for Dusty's sake, uh, hopefully a key item, and doubly for Dusty's sake, hopefully a required key item. Yeah, Martin's definitely doing uh, a lot of life glitches and uh, and a lot of D-Machine dismissals. And, uh, looks like we're going to go another round here. If I can get an eye on the ether count, I can make a good guess as to how many, we, as to how many we've done. There's another quake, and down goes the Dark Elf. Successful fight for Dusty Griffin. A little bit less experience there, 17,000, but uh, still a victory there. And the key item shall be a ninja hat. Very unfortunate. Womp womp. Nice to get the fight out of the way, though. Uh, you know it's done. You don't have to come back. And it wasn't the slowest it could be. It'll be faster for Martin, of course. Uh, but Martin is spending a lot of time here, so the speed of Martin's Martin's future boss kills is really going to balance out this D-Machine grind. And it's a question of, can you make up time on the boss fights to make up the time you spent on your grind? Yep, and now Tella is going to be taking a long, long rest. Down goes the searcher, and how many points? 1,200,000. No, one million twenty thousand seven hundred points. My goodness. Yep. That'll be nuke on both kids. That'll be a very punchy and healthy Yang. And Martin is going to be able to nuke his way through the rest of the seed. Uh, meanwhile, Dusty is coming for that Leviathan. Uh, like I said, this is something that is going to be fast. It's going to hit hard. But if you can get some lucky hits, you can uh, you can make this go pretty much your way. Silkweb, great idea from the start here. Yep, here comes the blink. It, oh, Rydia is down. Yep, hurry, hurry it up. Uh, do, do we have any illusions at all? No, we just have life potions, so only Rosa's got the blink so far. Yep, and luckily that attack landed on that Rosa. So we're gonna get this virus to come out. We're gonna get another virus from Rydia. Gonna start taking out some of these tentacles, slowing Octomam down. There we go. How much speed does uh, Octomam lose every time, or is it just a percentage? I have no idea. I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> I, I think I think it's a percentage, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Someone apparently they figured it out recently. Our tracker, Scythe Marshall, saying so. I will wait in chat until we get an answer. All right, Rosa is out of blink, I believe. I believe she has taken two hits, which is the uh, limit. There is a very powerful lit three for a lot of damage. And uh, so far, so good. But Rosa needs another blink and fast. And hopefully uh, an attack didn't hit the Q first. 
That did hit the Q, but fortunately it was a straight up miss against the Palum. You love to see that. Um, I was about to say, I would like to be seeing this Sid throwing out some hits because no matter the damage, a hit is a hit when it comes to Octomam, and Dusty does just that. Hey, wow. Martin. Martin, gonna go get that pan. Yeah, and this is after about 10 minutes in the... Well, actually, a lot more than 10 minutes. Uh, I would say 15 minutes of setting up. So that is the deficit as we, uh, we, we have to keep in mind as we go through this. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we, nuke is a very powerful thing. Two nukes is an even more powerful thing. I think he can easily make up the time. It's really going to depend on Dusty's side the efficiency of the checks and the efficiency of how he gets the key items that he needs. If Dusty ends up going through a lot of rabbit holes, even if Martin goes through the same rabbit holes, he's going to be making up time. So Dusty needs to be efficient and probably get a little lucky unless he decides to stop and do his own grind sometime soon. And looks like uh, another miss on Rydia. Here's Leviathan. We've got to be really close. That Dusty's dealt a lot of damage to Octoman. Down goes Octoman. Well played, Dusty. Well done. Okay, so Scythe Marshall is saying that you take Octomammoth's relative agility, you add a number to it that I'm not going to say because it's math, and Basically, it slows it down. So in this case, it went from RA1 to RA2, RA3, 5, 8, 12, and 16. So on that last tentacle, Octomammoth was 16 times slower than it was at the start of the fight. Very good. Um, uh, I could I could do some math if you'd like me to do some math, but uh, I, I, I can do the math of what is uh, 7 plus 1, because Dusty got the package, which is a key item. You're not a very helpful key item, but a key item. A key item is notably important because the, as soon, the sooner Dusty gets to 10 key items, the sooner all of his experience will be doubled, which will allow him to make up some time because none of Martin's experience was doubled aside from the life glitches uh, on that D-Machine grind. Because Martin is still only at four key items. We'll, we'll get the pan and then therefore the hook rather shortly, um, but still has that tower key at the top of Keyless Tower. Uh, so has the package there from that uh, Octomam uh, kind of waiting for him. Whereas uh, Dusty looks like going back in maybe for some more sirens here. Are we gonna see an early grind from Dusty? Because at this point, I think he's only got the moon left. I think, uh, well, there's still Baron, uh, but they don't have a Baron key and they don't have an Earth key. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's all we can do. They both went up Mount Ordeals. They both did the uh, Fabul. They, yeah, I think that's what we got. Yeah, so Dusty knows, knows he has to go to the moon. Um, we'll see exactly what he just has to do. Knowing that, that the there was no further Earth chains available, might work in Martin's favor because Dusty has to go to the moon pre-10 key atoms and pre-grind here. Um, Dusty is going to go ahead and launch the big well. Martin is going to go down and take out these two Fey March bosses. Uh, will be faster than Dusty, as previously mentioned. So this is this is a pretty exciting race here so far. Um, we have a grinded Martin who has to make up a bunch of time and Dusty who is in the driver's seat as far as checks are concerned. Yeah, very, very exciting here as we, uh, we're, we're approaching an hour, but uh, these objectives are going to start being checked off in a real hurry as we uh, go through here, especially on Martin's side, as uh, Zoe mentioned. Speak, speaking of Zoe, you should follow her. You should follow <laughs> her. That's what I think you should do. I mean, he's well. pretty cool. I, I think mean, they should. I think they should follow you. To be honest, so. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, they also should follow Skyth Marshall. That's what I think. I, I, you know, he's our tracker. He's been doing a great job. Uh, so I, I, I think uh, you should follow him. Also, Nyobari, and also follow these runners. They're putting on a great show for you. They're putting in a lot of practice, uh, and it shows. And they're both very entertaining to watch. Uh, 
I would highly recommend following either of these runners, but you should definitely follow both. All right, here we go, Dark Elf, and uh, order, order up uh, one one nuke here, and they want him, and he's gonna want to make sure Tella goes to bed in a in, in a little bit of a hurry, but uh, he's got time before that occurs. Yeah, he'll have a chance uh, if he decides to stop the second form. He can easily make that happen. Um, now, what's really gonna be kind of important here is, as I mentioned earlier, does Martin decide to go to Keyless Tower before the moon uh, has the levels? The moon is going to be fairly trivial at this point. But that Keyless Tower is required, so that could be a really big factor here over the next five to ten minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And although I guess it's going to depend on what's on the moon, how long is it going to take to deal with everything you need to do? We still have to find a legend story. We still have to find a rat tail. Uh, we still have to find an earth crystal. That all happens at the end of the moon at the where everybody does their last checks. Then I guess it doesn't matter. Yep, still got to find that twin harp as well. Um, so we are still a handful of key items away from go mode, but Dusty is check the Hummingway shop has gone ahead and slept here in the giant and will be going in. Uh, I imagine he's not going to take the Tella because he reset out of ordeals, but we'll see. Is he going to go straight the bottom to do a bottom up clear or is he going to go do his objective at the Murasame altar? So uh, some choices have to be made here. I'll tell you this much. I, I wonder if Dusty's thinking, did Martin take this Tella? Did Martin do the do the uh, grind? Uh, I mean, he doesn't know. There really isn't much he can do about it, but it, it I bet it has to be on the back of his mind. Oh, it'd be in the back of my mind as well. As soon as I see that Tella, I go, oh no. It, it did my opponent deem machine grind. Now, for a player of Dusty's caliber, for a player of Martin's caliber, it's less of an oh no and more of a hmm, okay. I need to make sure I'm, I play efficiently because if they did, that could give them an advantage. But if I push, then I can keep them from making up that time. Uh, speaking of which, Martin is over here nuking Octomam. Fight may look dicey right now, but it's over, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, and, and still just uh, rock, rocking it. 14 from 14 in bosses, so uh, very efficient. Resets off that package and uh, going to uh, not worried about those 10 key items and of course not because he's already up to level 80 billion or whatever so <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly it says I don't need 10 key items I don't need this package because I don't need the character and it's not part of an objective let's save you know the five seconds it I'll save resetting out instead of walking out um, Martin now with that pan in hand gonna go bonking on the head get rewarded from the Silves, and then go get that required hook from uh, from Sheila too. We'll have to see, is he going to fly by the tower, or will he stop and take Keyless Tower? Um, I would say, honestly, it's a coin flip at this point. Part of me goes, clear out the blue planet while you have double nuke, including Keyless Tower, just to make sure you've done everything you can before going moon. But the other half of me does say, hey, if I want to push my advantage with these levels, I need to, again, be efficient. And the efficient play is to wait till you get the tower key. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what Martin decides to do. Uh, tower key is at the top of tower. It is in its vanilla location. We saw an ant lion at the first boss, resulted in an immediate reset. We're going to see the uh, second boss here, Leviathan, and we are going to play this one. Yep. This one here, not too bad. The magic power can be pretty brutal with the ice twos, but overall, it's a fairly slow script. The big waves only do a quarter of your HP compared to the half that they do every other time with Ogo Pogo, including the lead off one. Uh, let's see that ice two. Yeah, the last twos are gonna hurt. Um, and I think this is gonna result in the loss because Leviathan is on firing on all cylinders here, um, unless, unless Leviathan, well, Leviathan, that spot doesn't have that much HP, does it? 
No, it's it's. I don't know the exact amount, but it's uh, between 20 and 30k. If this is the spot I'm believing it is, I believe this is the plague spot, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So I believe it's between 20 and 30k. Uh, someone in chat likely has the spreadsheet open or just has it memorized better than I do. Uh, so three or four of those lit threes, if we can get them off, we'll we'll clean this up. So it's definitely doable. It's definitely recoverable. Uh, there we go. Having the, the wall up on Palin definitely makes this a bit safer. Yeah, absolutely. And just uh, going to make sure the cure three comes down. I guess we're going to cure everyone, so Leviathan's going to get a small cure, which is totally fine, especially when another lit three is going to come down for a lot of damage. Yep, so it looks like we'll probably need another two of those, maybe one more, just depending on the amount of damage that these viruses are, are doing. Uh, chat saying 28,000 for the plague spot, so closer to 30k to the 20k, but I was technically correct. The best kind of correct. Yes. Um, then I noticed Martin picking up some coffins down at the bottom of Evelyn. Went ahead and uh, checked out that spot, so uh, inter interesting. Yeah, um, knows that we still have Baron Guards and Officer Soldiers still out there, unless I am mistaken. Uh, so coffins still do have value in this seed. You do have double nuke, but coffin is much faster, especially if you find them, you know, in the ribbon room or at the uh, Masamune altar where there's a lot of HP. Uh, you clean it up, and there we go. Dusty recovers and gets through this Leviathan. It's a nice little chunk of H uh, experience points, but more importantly, another key item check, and it's another Womp. It's oh, remix. wow! What? What is this seed so far? My goodness. <laughs> it is definitely a seed. Everybody has rolled for us, but that's how brackets kind of goes. I've seen a lot of uh, Key Adam Sparse seeds re recently. Um, and I just think it just happens to be how Rando wants to Rando. Uh, meanwhile, Martin has now joined Dusty on the moon. Uh, did, in fact, fade that Keyless Tower. Um, that could be huge. We could see a lot of extraneous checks from Martin if uh, if we get these key items sooner than later uh, on Dusty's side. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going to report to the Massimune altar. Massimune? Yeah. Yeah, so, Mas the Massa altar here. Um, yeah. See what's here. See if it's going to be particularly not nasty. For Dusty's sake, you know, I would hope for something like King Queen Eblin here. This is one spot where you really want an easy boss. King Queen Evelyn would be just the right dish. This works too. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could. Uh, yep, hourglass, bingo, game over. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, the cows are susceptible to the hourglass. You'll notice those three get stopped, and as long as you kill the orange ones, which this quake should do handily, they can't uh, transform while they're stopped, and so we can clear them out relatively simply. So, not King Queen Evelyn, but still very very manageable yep and uh wow definitely a successful fight and I, i'll tell you what uh, these two runners are definitely demonstrating why they are in the quarterfinal yep and martin is going to go after the objective first here the murasami altar at the top so we'll see uh what he gets from this uh dusty does get a key item which is good this will put him at two, four, six, eight, nine key items. So almost there if he wants to do a 10 key item grind. Uh, but unfortunately, not anything that pushes him forward. But good news for Dusty, the Water Hag is a fight that is not particularly sped up by having Nuke. So that objective spot will take about the same amount of time. Yep. And if, you, if you've never seen if you've never seen Free Enterprise before, Water Hag gets three hits and will be defeated unless uh unless the appropriate flag is checked, which it is not. Yeah, uh, Dusty leaving that ribbon room behind, I already forgotten which boss was in there, but I remember it was particularly nasty. Um, yeah, it was the ant line. Oh, it was the ant line, yeah, I know. Um, for Dusty's sake, kind of hope that there's nothing there, uh, but it is two checks in that ribbon room compared to the one and everything else, but he's gonna go ahead and go up to the crystal sword altar and uh, see if he can get 10 key items and maybe go back after that ant line afterwards try and get the full 200k uh instead of the 100k experience points from that fight yeah and uh 
yeah it's what this is one of those places where it's just like oh there's the two guards do we have those uh two no we have hourglass that's fine that'll yeah, work we, yeah we've got hourglasses here we've got access to stone um if they don't punch down uh, Palum before the hourglass goes into effect, that is very rude guards. Yeah, I know. They just somehow find themselves queued, their attacks queued up before they're stopped, and uh, there you go. Yep. And Martin has conquered the vanilla Murasame altar. It appears, lighting up that number five objective, drawing parity between our two runners and their objective cleared counts. Uh, so we'll see what does Susty get from this location. Is it a key item? Is it required? Or is it another whammy? Required. Uh, yeah, 100% required. And uh, and uh, now, now, but I, although it's going to take a while before we get back down to uh, uh, the blue planet for sure. Uh, so we still got several more checks to make down here. Yep. And Dusty is not uh, using one of the exits that he purchased. He is running back down, so I imagine he's going back down for that Anthion. That was his 10th key item. Uh, if he has any more hourglasses, I know he has a couple sirens. He could pop some gold dragons. There's a couple of things he could do. Let's see what his uh, what his plan is. Looks like it is going to be to pop a couple sirens, right as Martin kind of passes the exact spot that he was standing in. And we do still have some hourglasses. All right, cool. So this will be Dusty's grind. And... Probably won't get him to double nuke, but we'll draw him closer to Martin and kind of make up the level difference here. Yeah, uh, and I mean, this grind is really quick. Uh, let, me, let me tell you. Yeah, Leviathan, Quake, you know, they're only hitting for 3k right now, but after you get a couple of these done, you'll be great. He has three sirens, he had three hourglasses. I imagine he burns all three of both. Now he's going to try and take down a singular one and use that life glitch to, uh, to uh, get nope. the double experience from the one. Didn't quite kill it. We'll see if this fire should do it. And yep. And there's there's the virus or the virus pop. Yeah, no, the, no, you can't virus somebody who's dead. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a life potion. And here comes the quake. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And nope, not quite enough. Meanwhile, we have an antlion fight uh, uh, taking place over on Martin's side. And there's the final virus for the King Ryu, and Dusty Griff has picked up 190,000 experience points. Yes, yep. the Dragon Warrior memes are still live here on Free Enterprise 2, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate them, I know that. Uh, looks like Dusty is going to go ahead and <laughs> look for the sirens. Yeah, there they are. I uh, had a few extras that I didn't realize he had, uh, but it's going to go ahead and do his grind. Um, we'll see. Judging by the day two totals, I don't think he leaves here with double nuke, but if he can get even just enough firepower to make it through this ant lion, the ant lion should get him to double nuke. Uh, so we're going to turn our attention over to Martin. We're going to see what is here in the ribbon room. Is it required? It is. It that is sure a is. So yep. we now know that the moon does have quite a bit of value between that twin harp and that rat tail. Um, but aside from cave value, we've now seen everything. So that earth crystal must be the earth crystal in the legend sword must be through that twin harp, that rat tail, or cave value, unless I am forgetting something. Yeah, and Dusty Griff is going to come back down and face the Antlion again. I mean, he's picking up 540,000 experience points, which I don't know if that's going to... I don't know if that means nuke yet, but it's it certainly means a lot more health. So it sh he should be in much better position here. It, it may mean nuke on Palum. Uh, judging by the levels here, though, I don't think it will. Uh, it'll be really darn close, though. But you do have a few extra sirens, so even without hourglassing them, this is pretty uh, doable if you wanted to take one additional one to get to nuke. And I think Dusty may want to do that. Martin easily dismissing Leviathan. He's still he's still uh, perfect in uh, boss fights so far. 
Also, uh, chat pointing out that we did find. Who was I had missed that? Thank you. I yeah, assume it was from the Murasame altar. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The Murasame altar did yield the Baron key. Yep. Good. Good catch for. Good catch from. Uh, chat right there. Oh yeah, uh, Palom has weak. So yeah, taking these without uh, our glasses is gonna be trivial here. See when he gets to nuke. Because uh, as it stands, the difference between these two runners is the fact that again, Dusty has done keyless tower to get the vanilla tower key, which is required. Martin uh, has done the Murasame altar and also that ant lion. Uh, that is really where the the difference between these two runners lies right now. But we have weak on both of our black mages. This should get us nuke on both of them. And then we'll basically have uh, level parity. The only thing different between these two runners is basically Dusty as Rosa. So you have a white mage as well as a white caster if you want to go full reflex strats. And Martin has Yang. Yang will be more beneficial against Valvalis depending on where she is located compared to our full mage party. Fortunately for Dusty, if she is in Cave Bahamut, that is the one moon spot that you can nuke through with relative ease. So that will not be a concern. Perfectly okay for Sid to go down there on that uh, on that little uh, grind spot. And, and just because, you know, he's got plenty of hit points, so he's definitely gonna survive a big bang here. But unfortunately out of magic over uh, for, uh, a Palum, so uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna need to reset here. Yeah, just gonna just gonna kind of run out of this one. Don't uh, don't blame him in the slightest. Just gonna go. Okay, cool. That was a uh, that was a misplay. Let's just continue. All right, back to the wiring spot uh, for Martin. Uh, not back to the wiring spot. I'm going to see the wiring spot for the very first time, and we're going to see if these guards would like to take a break. Yep, let's see if Dusty decides to go back up and pop that last siren, or if he is content to just kill Antlion and get the, uh, the experience that way. After the slight faux pas with using the siren with no MP on Palum, I am personally more interested in get, just going after the, uh, the Antlion. And with that Cure 4 on Sid, I imagine that that is exactly the case. I am wrong. Yeah, more experience. Uh, yeah, Dusty's, I, I, Dusty's yeah. better at this game than I am. <laughs> <laughs> just want to point that out. That's true. Didn't he... He, uh, he won a... He's won a free Enterprise tournament, has he not? Yeah, he is our, I believe, highway to the Zemus Zone 3 champion and our Lally Ho League runner-up. He actually, uh, in the last round, in the round of 16, uh, upset Pankras, who is the person who defeated him in the Lally Ho League finals. Uh, oh, he also won the World Series of Free Enterprise. Thank you, chat. I forgotten that. I appreciate both the assist there from Groundflyer and Mood Blazer. The only two-time FE champion. That is correct. All right, we're going to see. Is Volvalis down at the bottom of Cave Bahamut? I guess we'll find out in about 30 seconds. Yep. There's the nuke learn over in Dusty's side. All right, so now we have reached parity with both of them having double nukes. Oh my gosh, I'm a witch. <laughs> Oh man, the powers still remain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, didn't you call something else uh, early on? Oh yeah, the uh, Rydia. Rydia. Uh, Rydia. Rydia. At, uh, at, at, uh, at, yeah, Hobbs. <laughs> I still got my powers, apparently. It's been a while since I've been on comms, but they didn't leave me. That's good to know. Uh, but yeah, so this is good news for, for Dusty, with Babalis being here specifically. As I mentioned, you can nuke through it. So the Yang advantage is uh, kind of nullified as far as this particular fight goes. Yep, and now we're doing uh, 
Very good strategy over on Dusty's side, getting those blinks up, because Antlion definitely hits hard. Yep, Antlion is a very punchy boy, and we have uh, one little kid, one teenager. I uh, can't remember how old Rose is. I feel like she is late teens or early 20s. And then we have an old man. So, one punchy boy versus a variety of ages. You definitely don't want him to hit the small child or the teenager. <laughs> nope. Uh, gonna refresh the blink over on Rosa's side. Uh, can't blame him there for that strategy. And uh, we're gonna be on our way to 200,000 experience. Oh, excuse me. No, went, went to Pulp. Went to uh, Palum. Hmm. The cursor was on Rosa, and then, and then yeah, one of those things. We're down yep. to uh, two characters over on Martin's side. Oh boy, uh, that fight got spicy real fast. But this this Yang is zerked up. Yeah, that, I was like, that fight's pretty much over. And we'll see what we get. Is it going to be something of value? That's an Adam armor. Yeah. Yep. Uh, oh, well. We we don't see these too much in tournaments. Uh, if you see a, at least not these days. If you see a pink tail, it is an automatic adamant armor. And you have to go to that cave anyway, because you've got to turn in the rat tail. Yep, so nice, uh, nice, efficient uh, free Adam Army he'll be getting here. Meanwhile, Dusty going to get that rat tail that we're talking about. Going to exit out, go up, take down the Murasame altar with that water hag. I imagine he goes and takes down this Valbalas as well. So Martin is the first one to clear the moon. Uh, Dusty is going to go ahead and take a nap, though. Don't blame him. That Antline fight was uh, hard. Pelham's getting a little grumpy, kind of want to make sure he takes a nap so that uh, he'll continue doing his job. Yep, yep, yep. All this, right. Th this kid does more at five than I do at 31. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, yeah, I, I would say the same thing, except I'm uh, 41. <laughs> Pelham's just built different. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but uh, Luca Key as is the prize for that uh, rat tail. Uh, do we need to do anything? No, we still need to find the legend sword, and we still need I to find the earth crystal. So, yep, and that Luca Key and that Baron Key, I feel are going to pull Martin further away from Felis Tower. Uh, I imagine we're going to get the Baron play after the Cave Magnus play because Cave Magnus is required. You probably want to do that first. You called it, Zoe. You called it. You're definitely a witch. <laughs> that one's not a witch. That one's just good routing, which I uh, trust Mar I trust Martin to do, so. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I'm not going to take credit for that one. <laughs> well, well, uh, somebody's going to be taking credit for 100,000 Jill in about two minutes. We're, we're about to... Uh, we're about to name a tune here, and the the tune that Edward's harp will be playing. Yeah, now, I will make a call, just just to just to prove that I'm not always a witch and that it doesn't always work. But I'm going to call the Golbez here in Twin Harp, just, just to prove that I'm not just to prove <laughs> just to prove that I am fallible. I'm going to call the Golbez here. All right, all right. <laughs> There's the Baron Key pickup for Dusty Griff. It is now three to three in the objective territory, but uh, I think it's about to become four three. Yep, rather quickly. We'll have to sit through a very brief cutscene, um, and then a slightly longer cutscene, and then we'll get to the actual fight. And how are we going to wipe out this? You are you are not going to win. No, that is no, that is. This will, you will still have to sit through the cutscene, unfortunately. Unless you have a coffin to use on yourself. Use the coffin on yourself, you get it back. That's true. Yeah, oh, I mean, the, that's... Inventory, the inventory snapshots. I think we'll get it out before the week cast at least. But yeah, the inventory here snapshots. Uh, so anything you use during this cutscene fight, you get back. So using kamikazes, using coffins uh, is to your advantage. I, I love this part where you, where you have to find a way to defeat yourself here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Yang makes it difficult, but uh, I believe we are going to be quiet while uh, 
and he spins up his fingers and starts to play this harp. So we'll be back in just a Yep, good luck everyone. Well, um, so we have a debate. Uh, is uh, is this the boss fight from Final Fantasy IV, or is this the Culex fight from Super Mario RPG? I, I don't know, Zoe. Who, who's who's won? Who's won a hundred thousand Jill here? I don't know. I, I guess I might have to make that decision here. It's technically the Culex theme, which means Inven has won the cash. There we go. That that's there's your answer right there. Meanwhile, uh uh that's what the text box will tell. Okay, well yeah. then Inven has won the cash. Yep, you can collect your gill at the counter in Fabul. A little bit of off-brand vanilla for us tonight. And Vavalis does go down over in Dusty's side. Pink tail picked up there and Oh, did we see? A, oh, we saw a legend sword. So it was uh, so that uh, twin harp was effectively double required. We're gonna turn that in, and we're not gonna in Excalibur because Cecil's been banned. Uh, so we're going to get a really cool weapon we instead. Could, we could still maybe get an Excalibur. It's any tier seven or eight item, but we could also get a second advent armor. Um, but we get something along the lines of like a Bahamut summon as well. But first, let's go shopping. And yeah, and we're not interested in any of that. Artemis arrows. Eh. I mean, not for this party, but Artemis arrows are pretty good hit there under most circumstances, especially with the Artemis bow that's right there. Uh, for the Rosa on Dusty side, had that valve been in a different location, uh, those could have been really huge. Dusty, where are you flying to? Ah, he's like, where's my hovercraft? <laughs> Fair enough. So now it is five, uh, five objectives to three. Uh, well, soon to be four. Oh, he's gonna go down the uh, Luca Cave here, the sealed cave. So we're yeah. gonna see if we're gonna see if this. We still need to find an Earth Crystal. So yeah, this is, at this point, this is an Earth Crystal hunt, and the sooner that Martin finds it, it's potentially bad. Uh, you kind of want it to be a bit later because that means Dusty's likely going to follow in your footsteps and you'll get time to make up to go to that keyless tower. If it's like exactly here and Dusty decides to follow uh, Martin's footsteps, Martin may be incentivized to go to that Baron first, the two key items. So ah. <laughs> this is kind of a coin flip. Um, I think at this point, we know that it's either here in Luka Cave, in Sealed Cave, or it's at Baron. Yeah, I'm I'm guessing this race might decide on might be decided right here and right now. But uh, uh, I, I, you know, it, I'm I'm kind of biting my nails here. I don't know how this is gonna go yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, chat pointing out that Dusty might do Baron first because Luke is the only thing that he has left underground, so he might want to clear out the overworld first. And it's a K main check plus a K summon check. So 
that's something that I would see as good logical routing. Martin was already underground after foraging, which makes sense why he would do this here. Uh, so if this is the Earth Rose for Martin, that could be good news, especially if he decides to clean out the underworld while he's here and uh, and take down that Keyless Tower. But we'll, uh, we'll have to see what is about to happen. There it is. Oh. All right. Oh. We in the booth know where everything is at. Our runners do not. At this point, Martin must clear out Keyless Tower to get that tower key. At this point, Dusty must finish up this Twin Harp fight and then take out Sealed Cave, which, just to add a little insult to injury, is going to be the Alt Gauntlet. And those bats do fly. The Quake does affect the Bat Ladies because they're on the ceiling, but these bats do fly. And I'd like to remind you that the alternate for Wool Gauntlet is still the best flag in Free Enterprise. I should you know. know. I was like, uh, you know, you know a little a thing or two about football gauntlets, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I just saw a stream uh, uh, just earlier this evening where one person had to fight three trap doors at the same time. Yeah, we got a little bit of time here. We have an alt gauntlet. that we have a replay of uh, a arguably vanilla music. I'm going to allow you to speak over if you would like to to plug your football gauntlet just briefly. Uh, sure. Uh, it, it's it's pretty fun. It's a randomizer for uh, the pixel remaster of Final Fantasy IV. Um, pretty easy to install. You get to see stuff like what Martin's dealing with, except the really the formations are totally randomized. So uh, as I mentioned, you would run into uh, three trap doors. I've had to deal with four uh, D Lunars at the same time. And oh, by the way, you can't just magic spell them. And uh, because if you do, their walls will still go up. The only, the only way you avoid the wall is uh, X potions, cure threes. So it's uh, kind of ridiculous. Oh, yeah. you. I've also had to fight Odin and uh, Wyvern at the same time as well. Good oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it, it, it's really fun. It, it really makes you, uh, you know, when you see these incredibly complex uh, fights, you really have to figure out which one do I really need to get rid of first, and especially toward the end. So um, it, it, it's pretty fun to, uh, you know, it, I'm not, I'm not going to say we're going to be seeing tournaments from this randomizer anytime soon, but it, it, it's a good nice to play every now and then. Yeah, fun little game to play casually. You need more of those in our life. Um, thank you so much for, for plugging it. Thank you for developing it. It's definitely a lot of fun. Uh, Dusty has cleaned up the Twin Harp, gotten his Legend Sword. Now he is just that Earth Crystal away. And we'll see. If he decides to go ahead and go Forge, I can see him doing Luca first. Um, really, I think this race is about to be decided off of two moves. What does Dusty do next? And what does Martin do next? If Martin goes to Tower, I think regardless of what Dusty does, Martin's in the driver's seat. If Dusty goes Baron, Martin might still be in the driver's seat. <laughs> it really just depends. Yep, here we go. Two big decisions coming up in the next uh, 60 seconds. You know what? I think this. I think Dusty's going to go Luca, and I'll tell you exactly why. It takes about a minute to dive it to get the knowledge of the key item, whereas Baron is a couple of cutscenes, and you don't get the knowledge quite as quickly. And since you just forged for the same reason that Martin did this, I think Dusty goes to Luca. Ooh, wow, this is, oh, this is, I, okay. I'm thinking now I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna assume that Zoe is correct because Zoe's gotten everything correct so far this seed virtually. So I'm gonna say that Martin's ahead by about two minutes, maybe three. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he still has to do that keyless tower, which will take him probably about those two to three minutes. So if he goes there right now and Dusty goes right to Luca, that looks like that's what's happening on one case. No, he turned. Oh, huge. And he's going to Luca. Oh, my goodness. This is a huge turning point here. Um, oh, he's wow. going to go, oh, he's gonna go do Zot. He's going to go do Zot. He's doing his yeah. required. He's doing his objective. He's being smart. OK. This isn't bad. I forgot that you have to actually do Zot after getting the Earth Crystal. I got I got a bit too excited, y'all. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, we, you know, I mean, he still could go to Baron. He still, uh, yeah, this will drop you right next to Baron, which is 
again, for good routing, and because it's two checks compared to the one in Keyless Tower, I think I think we're going to see Baron check, which I think puts Dusty in the driver's seat, unless Martin just gambles and decides Keyless Tower is the play. We know it is, but I'd be hard-pressed to do it after with the how just how perfect it drops you in front of Baron while you have a Baron key. Yeah, uh, this this pretty much was the big decision point of this match right here. I mean, yeah, exactly. But um, but we'll we'll see. We all the decisions technically have not been made yet, so uh, it, it's not Whoa. quite finished yet. Oh, we had a rope of shame. Oh no. Well, that's all right. Three seconds really isn't going to hurt right now. That pointing out that if Martin does do Baron and finds the pass, that that would also potentially put him back in the driver's seat. And that is true. So I guess the kind of the bad news is if pass is here at Zot exactly. That's what uh, those two hearing from Martin don't necessarily want to see. Well, here's the king and queen of Eblin over at the uh, Magus sisters spot. Uh, so, yeah, that was uh, that was a very competitive fight right there. Yeah, we've got no we, we've got no time to wait for them to become conscious. We're just gonna take them out while they're unconscious. Yeah, Martin, that's that's Martin's just fighting dirty. Yeah, that's just rude. Well, that's all right. We have uh, we have Odin here that's just going to zap him. Yep. Says, hey, that was rude. But we got a Tella, and then we're going to have another character. My guess would be like Edge. We haven't seen our Edge yet. We haven't seen our Eddie yet either. One of the two Edwards. Yeah, which is just like, yeah, whatever. Oh, King. Uh, King. King. I am fallible. Yeah, that's right. You missed on Goldez, and now you've missed on you. Now you've missed on Kane here. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Only, I can only do it when I'm not trying. <laughs> that that's fair. That's fair. Uh, okay, this boss is Goldez. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if I'm uh, all knowing. Nope, evil will. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good try. It's a good try. <laughs> Oh my gosh! All it's right, hard. Does... it's hard to guess. I know. Uh, well, uh, well, we might as well. Well, no, no, it's not time for that guess yet. We'll 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 talk about that guess in about five minutes. Yep. Dusty is on fight four or five here. I've lost count. I was paying attention to what was going on on Martin's side, but Dusty very soon will have. He already has their crystal in hand, but he will soon be able to leave with it. Uh, and then we'll be following Martin. If this is the pass, that's bad news for Martin. If the pass is in Baron, which is the only other place it could be if it's not here, that's good news for Martin. That's Ooh. bad news for Martin. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, he's gonna have to go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, yep. you, you've, you've got to do this. It's two checks. You're right here. This is absolutely the logical routing play. Um, as I had mentioned before, doing the early grind, you're waiting out that, that tower key. It's also an objective. So Keyless Tower is just such a gamble. Um, I would know. I want to race against a very good runner by gambling on Keyless Tower and getting a vanilla tower key. Those sort that, that exact placement of that exact key item can mess up a runner's plan so fast. And now I'm going to say Dusty's got about a five minute advantage. Now, he, he doesn't have the pass, but he'll get it. He, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. He'll get it. That's true. He's, he does still have to go through the Tower of Zod. I keep forgetting that part. So, uh, yeah. OK, so I wouldn't say five minutes, but he's he's definitely ahead. Yeah, I think at this point, it is Dusty's race to lose. Uh, we will see how this finishes out, though, because uh, Zoromus isn't quite the great equalizer that you find in level 9 in Z1R or even the Dragon Lord in DWR, but Zoromus can do some damage to a runner's plans. Yeah, although at these really high levels, 
Uh, 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 yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's it's unlikely, but it can happen. Uh, Gomez oh. Gomez doesn't have to be in Baron just for chat here. Gomez could be at the Mist Cave, could be in the Waterfall, could be in the Giant, or could be taking the day off. Hey, Yang has usurped Baron. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> he's, he's been punished. He's been punished for taking over Baron, let me tell you. Uh, now, if, now, if Gomez is in the Odin spot, that's going to slow Martin down even more, and that's going to be really obnoxious. Yeah. Um, will he find out? I imagine he will. Um, yeah, th there's no reason you don't just go right back in and, and check that summon spot. Yep. Hey, there's your sister. Yeah, a little late for that, I think. Oh, and that brings up a good thought. Now I'm thinking about it. I was, it, it, it the um, the uh, um, the anchor is is Dusty Griff gonna replace that Ridia with Ridia? Nah, uh, he's got the Sid with the curse ring. He's fine. Ah, brilliant. And uh, Crystal has uh, stopped the uh, wall from. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has a crystal and unnamed woman A. <laughs> and that's a great improvement. Let me tell you, that, that was a great change. Let me tell that you. That was, like, I, I put in, like, most of the 4.5 changes were things that I did. Um, like, the new flags, the adjustments, a lot of that's what I did. And, like, right before we shipped it, or it's like, there's one thing I want to do, and I've wanted to do it for a while. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I check the change log, and I see that, and I go, oh, board, that's better than all of my changes combined. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. All right, Dusty Griff has been zapped for uh, defeating the uh, the Eblin royalty. Yeah. And let's see. Oh no! Well, okay, they're 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 kind of back, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so 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 I guess it's Dread Reaper who's who's uh, <laughs> who's all knowing here. <laughs> Sorry, Martin. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that that's gonna cost him quite a bit of time. It, it it's at least a minute to go through that uh, through that cutscene. Oh yeah, yeah, this cutscene is not particularly short. Uh, and this spot has really high magic power. The Yang will be fine, but uh, if Yang gets eaten, that's not going to help you. I uh, really want Tella to be eaten here, please. Oh, it failed. Nope, oh, there goes Tella. He'll try. He'll try up to three times. He must have hit the admin armor wear the second time. Which I don't know who the admin armor is on in Martin's party. Probably the Palom. Um, I guess he didn't get paralyzed. So yeah, that makes sense. Yes, Golvez. Let's let's get on with it and end this. Here's here's your nuke. There goes about a third of your HP on the spot. Even more than that. Oh, ow! <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> yeah, no, these spells hurt quite a bit. Luckily, the only one that can really hurt Palum would be that virus. Uh, so we're we're safe regardless. And there we go. We are done with the Golvez. We'll see what we get. Dusty, meanwhile, finishing up Tower of Zot, getting the pass, getting the crystal. We'll be flying over to Troya, and we will see about kicking a butt. And Martin has now gotten the, the bad news that Keyless Tower is where he needs to go. So, uh, yeah, we... Uh... Oh, no, we can't... We can't... We... Oh, yeah, yeah, we can talk about bots. Yes, yes, we can. So, over 600 sprites available. So it's time for the big question. Uh, what's this aerobic sprite going to be, uh, Zoe? I don't know. Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And uh, is butt cute? Uh, does it have a butt? Does it have a hat? Does the hat have a butt? Is the hat's butt cute? There's a lot of questions. Is it a slime? That's is my question. Slime? Are, are, is there more than one butt? Like... How many butts does the hat have? 
I love how this. How many butts could a butt butt butt? The butt butt. No, never mind. How many butts could a butt 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 if a butt butt could butt butt? Yeah, sure. There we go. That was actually that was a lot harder to say than I was expecting it to be. All right, everyone, say that three times fast. No, don't do that. We we got we have to do some addition here. There, I did it. That that that. Hey, it, it's not a Zoe comp session unless I get my co-com to groan at least once. And it took me the entire race, so I've done my I've done my due, due due diligence. I've met my quota. Now we can see who Dusty is going to who Dusty is going to fight. Well, it definitely is a Mylon Z. Uh, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So uh, here we go. Crystal Falls and. We have 101,000 hit points to drain out. Actually, maybe less if we're going to do reflex strats. I don't think we're going to do reflex strats at this point, but... Oh, oh it's oh, Gygus from Earthbound. No, oh, that is an evil boss. That is yeah. such an evil boss. This yeah. boss, like, to this day, just the sprite alone can instill fear in my heart. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Earthbound, it, it, it's such an awesome game. Like... Well, anyway, we got a we got a nuke bounce all ready to start start off this fight. Eighty six hundred points, and why is my pen not writing? Not a good time for the pen to stop writing. <laughs> oh wait, let's see. Let's see if I can keep track of it in my head. So we're gonna have a silk web here to, to slow Rome's down as well. So eighty six hundred plus eighty seven hundred. That's a seventeen point three k. Have a white coming out. Yep, we're doing reflex strats. Yep, we're going so... full full reflex. Just got it drain sixty one hundred. See what we got there. It's 9k, it's 26.3k, so we are almost halfway there. Here's here's another Dragon Warrior meme just uh, infiltrating the free enterprise community. We're we're counting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta gotta count that damage, especially if for whatever reason things go sideways and you need to throw out a yellow nuke, you gotta know that's gonna kill. Let's see what we got here. The nuke coming out from Rydia. 8.7, so that's going to put us at 35k. We have passed the halfway point. This big bang will do less than 1200 damage to each party member. Boom, there we go. Everyone's fine. Just yeah. Keep slinging spells. Yeah, I, I really, yeah, I don't think we need to do any curing or anything like that. Oh, 10k right there. Down There's... to 15,000 hit points. Yep. Two more nukes should do it. Meanwhile, Martin has finished the super cannon room has gotten his crystal but it's probably going to be too little too late we will see make sure that dusty gets the confirmed kill another white coming out for another 7300 so that is going to be we are at 52,300 roughly so if this does 9,000 we will be done not quite oh not quite this nuke uh, will finish it though yeah we're done oh well played by Dusty Griff. Despite losing t two boss fights, he will be winning this C with a final time of 99 minutes and one second. GG to Dusty Griff. Taking the first match of this best of three here in the quarterfinals. We'll see if we can get him in for an interview here shortly. And there he is, our winner. GG's, Dusty. Hey, GG's. All right, before we do anything else, I have one question to ask you. Before going into Baron Inn, did you save? Do you remember? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, oh! Uh, I, was, wow. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> there was multiple times in that scene where I didn't save in places I should have, like Antline early. I never go to the back of Antline on these flags and save at the save point like that. And. I, yeah. I went in there. I went in there. I was like, "Oh God, I didn't save outside." So I have to, which paid off because there's this exit back there, and it was kind of hilarious. But um, and, and, yeah, and, and Wyvern in there too. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but before Baron, I I have no earthly clue. <laughs> it was it was just it was very funny to me because like that Maga Sisters could have been pretty rough, but you got the uh, you got the the quake off before things went south because you hadn't healed. And I was like, "Oh gosh." This oh could... yeah that well that yeah that's absolutely true too because like I, I did like as i got into the first fight of bear i was like oh god like i i have one hp on most of my characters right now this uh, is not uh, the best thing but i, I fell 
<laughs> okay. When, when, you, when you get that early push, like, uh, mm -hmm. or sirens and stuff, and, and you get Quake, and you, you, it just feels like you just, like, glide through the beginning of the seed. So <laughs> maybe, yeah. I was, maybe I was being a little, a little too confident. Uh, Scythe has confirmed that you did in fact save, okay, so <laughs> so you, you you were good one way or the other. Um, but GG's, um, I'm sure if you decide to watch this one back, you'll see exactly where the difference was made, and that was the keyless tower into Vanilla Tower Key. Um, Martin left it for last. Martin did a really early D machine grind, getting that Tella on the moon, um, and so he kind of like he was ahead early game. You pulled back ahead while he was grinding. He made up the ground, and then. Just after doing Zot, obviously you have the bearing key. That's the logical play. That's where he went instead of going to Keyless Tower, and that right. was that was the game decider. Uh, yeah. But you played very well all throughout. Uh, just very, very impressive. Always impressive to watch you play. Always a great time to watch you play. Um, do you have any thoughts on the seed or anything? Yeah, it's, this is really interesting because um, I think a lot of the plays I... I, I did, I would not do again. <laughs> if I, you, you were playing fast and loose. I was like, what yeah. is this? This is not the Dusty I know. It, but it's it was, kind of funny because I'm because I've been leaning into that on brackets, and I just especially if you get early power with like just be able to pop a couple of sirens and, and go with it, it just kind of feels nice. But I was like, the, those Bay March fights did not go as fast as I thought they would go, and then stuff on the moon did not go as fast as I wanted to get. Like it took me forever to get to 10 key items, and and I'm very like. I try and hold back on grinding until, until 10 key items, and, and money was a really big issue uh, for a lot of the seeds. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wasn't really get. I guess I could have like, did a bit more looting, but it did quite a bit of looting as it was. So yeah, it, it was kind of interesting because it was I was just putting off doing the, those Kiryu fights for so long, or whatever egg fights for that matter, um, when I could have done that 20 minutes in if I got the cash for it. And, steamroll the seed from there but uh yeah i kind of leaned into the fact that quake is enough to get you through most of the early game um then a lot of the mid game as well and then level three spells could get me through pretty much everything else on earth um and i was like i hope i can get nuke and stuff as fast as possible on the moon but that it took a while so that made me a little nervous um, I mean, how long i kind of had to sit around and, and try and get 10 key items before i mm -hmm. come but uh, yeah, it, it did work out. But, uh, I think going back, like I, I probably wouldn't do that Fey March play, play again. That was probably the big one because it was like those fights were doable. But there's always the difference of doable and sensible, or, or you know, fast to do at the time. And uh, yeah, they they did not uh, go very fast. Yeah, the the whole uh, you were too preoccupied whether or not you could you didn't stop to think whether or not you should yeah, sort of thing exactly. yeah um but yeah I, I noticed during your king ryu grind where you uh you popped the siren when paladin ended up mp and you're like well um i'll be right back <laughs> yeah yeah that's exactly what went through my mind i looked at my inventory i was like ah, okay, okay i guess i'll be i'll just like put my head down and Walk um, back to this uh, if you'll excuse me a minute uh martin has completed the um Free Enterprise uh, seed. Um, his final time is Wu Bear three at eight p.m. Eastern on Free Enterprise. So uh, good game, yeah, Martin. Yeah, yeah, good game, Martin. <laughs> a great time. Okay, one forty-three fifty-seven. Sorry, Neil Barry. Uh, that <laughs> that was coming your way one way or the other. <laughs> um, so GG to Martin. We'll see about getting him in here. Um, did you have any final questions, Game Boy? I know I hogged the mic for that one, so. Uh, yeah, uh, you pretty much had it all covered. Um, yeah, just those uh, two defeats, most notably the Wyvern spot. You had that reset on that line, but uh, yeah, very efficient and uh, really worked out. And now you're up 1-0. What, what are you thinking as you head into your next race here? Yeah, I think I'll uh, play a little less spicy next time. <laughs> not, not just like, like I did this time. We uh, will see. We will see, yeah. It's kind of been the thing of the tournament for me, at least the last few matches. I feel like I've played a lot more aggressive than I, than I kind of usually do, and it's been pretty fun. So I'm kind of trying to continue doing that a little bit. But uh, yeah, I, I'm having a lot of fun on these brackets, and I feel like I'm kind of coming to, into my own on them now. So uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next one. I'll probably play pretty similar, but uh, maybe if I have another Fame March choice like that, I won't do it next time. We'll see. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I know I can't like, 
I was pretty nervous, honestly, through parts of that because of the Fae March and a few things that went a little slow. Um, the grind, especially, um, because Martin is no slouch at all. Martin is extremely good. And uh, yeah, so it's it's kind of just like the luck of the draw and the way Rando go and everything like that. But uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to uh, facing Martin again and seeing how it goes on uh, Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. But, well, GG's once again. And uh, again, boy, I want to point out that you there near the end called it being about a five minute difference and the difference in times was four minutes 56 seconds so uh good on you on that one nice. ah it lo looks like i'm the one who's all seeing hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah we, 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 we we've been doing a lot of uh, all seeing throughout this uh race uh, I'll, I'll put it to you that way so <laughs> anyway good game dusty we'll see you in the next race Thank you all for commentating. Thanks to uh, Seth Marshall and uh, to Naya Bari uh, on, the, on the back, uh, running the restream and tracking there. And uh, GG's to Martin. Looking forward to it. All right. Thanks all. Thanks. All right. We're going to see. There's our Martin. Hey, Martin. GG's. Hi. How are you feeling? <laughs> Healers Tower. Uh, ain't that a thing? <sighs> it is a thing. I, we were talking about on the broadcast that you doing that grind early before doing that keyless tower might have been your downfall. Turns out it was, but I, I, I will say in your defense, if there is one key item in one particular location that can mess up a runner more than vanilla tower key, tell me because I don't believe it. I, I, I don't disagree. Not for, yeah. not for a second. Yeah, because I, I imagine you, you were holding out trying to find the tower key before you went there, right? I, I really was. Um, Obviously, you know, chasing the items I found off the moon and everything and everything just started kind of, you know, piecing together. And I'm like, all right, well, I know I have this Baron key. And then it's like, well, here's an Earth Crystal. I'm like, great. These route perfectly. And flying out of Luca and just thinking about Keyless Tower, like, nah, I know it's, you know, just under a minute to check it. Couldn't be vanilla. Nah, I got so many more checks to do in objectives, you know? That's silly. Yeah. Why would I do that? Yeah, your routing was spot on. Like, hands down, like, going bare in there was the correct logical routing choice. Like, I, I will never look at someone doing that and go, no, they're wrong. No, that was right. So you just got randoed. Yeah, yeah. The only other time I had to do it was uh, when I came back to Earth after my grind, um, doing dwarf, getting the pan, and basically telling myself at that point, I hadn't seen the K summon check really. It's like, well, I have the march and I have two people with nuke right now. So let me go detonate that place and get a lousy package out of it. And as I'm flying out after, you know, taking a swing at Yang with a pan, I'm like, well, I'm flying right by. I could go check it now, but pan's an objective. So let me go do that instead. And yeah. It happens. It happens. That's why we play the game. Yep. Yep, exactly. Game Boy, you got any questions? I do not. I've been uh, trying to get my pen to work. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, I'm mostly out myself. When is uh, when is the next race? Uh, it is Thursday at, I believe it is 7 o'clock Eastern. All right. Excellent. That is good to know. Uh, I think we have some races tomorrow as well. I'm going to go ahead and get those plugged out here. We have Curios versus Simbu. That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern on RPG Limit Break. That is a game one. We have game one between Moonblaze Wolf and Rybon at 9.30 p.m. Eastern here on Free Enterprise 2. And we also have game two between Possum Morpheus and Woo Bear at 8 p.m. on Free Enterprise. That is uh, what we were seeing in the finish time there momentarily. <laughs> I, I like that finish time a little bit better though. Can I, can I have that one instead? <laughs> if I can figure out how to make that work and make sense, I'll, I'll do that for you, but I'm not yeah, sure if I can please. do that. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it from us. Um, do you have any last thoughts, uh, Martin? Uh, it was, it was a fun seed. I I'm definitely looking forward to watching it back. Thank you both. Obviously game boy and Zoe um scythe doing you know all the buttons and nayabari that was uh yeah rolling that one that's what yeah. i get for fading keyless tower i'll i'll i'm gonna get a non 28 out of 28 seed one of these days <laughs> just not yet yeah well that that time with 2028 is pretty good um so ggs once again uh gameboy where are we headed and where are we sending this party to 
Yeah, we're we're off to see uh, uh, a fellow Dragon Warrior randomizer runner, Commander Leonhart. Uh, of course, he's not playing Dragon Warrior runner. He's playing Free Enterprise, of course, and it's uh, gonna be a good time over there. So um, th this is. Uh, been awesome zoe and uh glad to work with you once again and um it's time for us to head on out of here so uh for uh, my co-commentator zoe for the restreamer uh who is naira bari for the our tracker scythe marshall for our runners martin Blo road cloak broad cloak excuse me and dusty griff Okay, I need I need to get out of here. You're all awesome. You've been watching free free enterprise too. Please have a great night. Take it easy, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Bye bye.